Hello everyone, back again with another video. Today we're going to be looking at storylines in TEW 2020. Uh, now I've briefly touched on this in a, a few other um, episodes. Uh, my top tips one, uh, this was one of the tips that um, um, at least one of the, you guys has uh, responded to and said that um, that it, it worked for you and then another guy had um, try, was going to try it out. So uh, it's something different. Um, I'll go through the um, sort of pros and cons of, of each way. So let's uh, let's get into it. So this is the default way. I've just loaded up uh, an SWF. Um, I will give some WWE examples for people who don't play um, SWF. But to start off with, I'm just going to show you how to set it up and do the pros and cons. And then we can go into um, sort of WWE examples for for those who uh, prefer real world mods. So, um, in this example, um, it's obviously the first day of SWF. So, um, this is sort of where my champion is. Uh, it's already got great heat, 87. Uh, with SWF, um, I need to have five storylines over 70 heat. So, this one is already there. So, you can either do two things. You can delete all your storylines off um, and then add them all with um, SWF Championship, SWF Championship Contenders, uh, however you want to name them, um, North American Champion, North American Contenders, uh, and you can have up to eight people um, in those stories. Uh, you can even do it with your tag, although you can only have four tag teams within it. So... Um, it's already difficult with SWF going into the first show because they only have three of the five storylines with the heat um, at the respected level of over 70. So you have to get two of these other storylines over that 70 mark or create some more, um, which will make it easier. Um, it's not like only one angle either or... Or one match, you've got to have them in two segments uh, to get it over, or else it won't count. So, um, what I would do if you like the default, and this SWF is the example here, I'd probably have two people who are quite over face each other, um, like in a tag match, and then a promo afterwards. So, somebody like Joey Morgan's a face, he's really popular, he's good in the ring, have him team up with. Angry Gilmore, who hasn't got a storyline. Um, they're going to have a good match against... Uh, so you could have Brett Star and um, the Crippler. They're, none of them have storylines. So you could do two separate storylines. Say Crippler was going to feud with Joey Morgan and you were going to have Gilmore and Star face off. So there you go. On your first show, put them in a tag match. Uh, either have a pre-show angle where the bad guys are talking smack about the good guys, or an after after the match you could have the, uh, the baby faces win and then the the heels attack them afterwards. Uh, so there you go. You've got two segments of the show. Uh, they'll more than likely, depending on where you place them, get over seventy pretty easily. Um, maybe as you start the show off with it, the show uh, having hot, hot a hot angle and then. Um, have the match so that's the default way you have loads of um, different individual storylines uh, obviously it's it's more organized for you so you can literally see with from the what you've called them who's feuding with who but the only thing is because they're so one-on-one -on -one or you can have triple threat like here we've got a triple threat um, if if you wanted to say Remo to face Mickey Lau for example who's in a different storyline one-on-one, -on -one, you would have to have, say, Valiant or Rogue run in or be on commentary. Otherwise, you'd get a storyline penalty. Um, or it, it says something like, penalised for not having a story. Um, but in my view, like if, if they're in the championship hunt, um, Mickey Lau and Remo, then that is a story you can build on because the championships matter. Well, especially in my world, anyway. So that's why I do it differently. So let's let's start 
changing it to how I do things. So that was my pros and cons of the default way. You may have some others that uh, you you feel strongly or against for. So, um, but this is just another way of viewing things. So where's my the other reaper? So this is going to be my SWF. Championship storyline. So there we go. And this one, because it's my contenders, uh, I'm going to change that to delete that. Don't need the backstory of it. Um, SWF Championship contenders. So these. Uh, Remo, Rogue, and Valiant, I'll move over to this storyline because they will be contesting my number one contendership match um, and they'll be more or less in angles and storylines for the next three to six months with either Golden and Scythe. So um, I, I always do long-term booking. Um, I have a spreadsheet where I lay it all out. So for my plan, it's usually Golden versus uh, Remo at Supreme Challenge, which is in August. How do I get there before then? I'll work backwards from there. Um, but usually that that is what I'm booking. So that is why they would be in that storyline together. Um, Scythe's going to have like a three-month to four-month feud with Golden on and off. Um, so he's going to cost Golden the championships there and the February pay-per-view, nothing to lose. Um so that gets Remo to go off with the title and feud with Valiant and Remo. And then whoever I'm building up, probably Joey Morgan, he's going to win his feud with Crippler. And so he's next in line um, for Remo. So yeah, that, that is why um, I like to have them grouped together. Um, it stops on, it's, it's pretty annoying getting penalized quite a lot for this. It also, with multiple people at the top of your card, um, it's uh, it's quite easy that like, everyone builds momentum because these storylines are popular so more people are getting sort of boosts in a way um, so next we need our North American Championship one so these guys are contesting that so we change that to SWF North American save details uh, Supreme Star this is a these two are in the contention, but they're not quite on popularity level. Uh, maybe his jungle art is, but he's in, he's, he's sort of towards the end of his career, so he, he's pretty much there to put pass his popularity onto jungle art, in my opinion. So I would have this as the contenders, um, and we'll add, we'll come back and add people into these afterwards. Uh, this is our tag team one, so also storyline SWF tag team. And these two are SWF Championship. Contenders two. That was one. Did I get rid of the text? You can go in and fill these bits in with who's feud and with who. Um and only put just little bullet bullet points. Um, right, so I need to add um, so I'm just going to have uh, people who are not in a storyline and uh, wrestlers. So Gilmore is going to go as a major role into the Contender 1 slot. Um, and he is going to be feuding with um, Hollywood Brett style. Now I can remove Remo, Rogue and Valiant. Because they are currently my challengers 
with over the next six months for the SWF Championship. So we can add them in here. You're not going to get a penalty for taking people out. It's always better to have somebody in there before you take someone out. Otherwise, you're probably going to end the storyline. Um, who else was it? Valiant and Rogue. So there we go. So that's our SWF um, Championship. Um, so that I'm pretty happy with. So who else can go in this one? So we want um, Joey Morgan and oh, the, the Crippler. So th these are going to contest. Again, you don't you don't actually need the second one. Uh, I'm going to take Chrissy Angel out of there because she's just a supporting role. Um, you could have Hannah in there because there's times before where I've run um, angles with Rogue sort of confronting Hannah and scaring her or, or even attacking her. So you could have Hannah in there if you wanted to. Um, so you, you don't need the two contenders um, if you want. You could have all eight in there, but um, because this has already got heat, I'm kind of just keeping it for now. So down the line, when I build up my North American uh, and my tag division to um, to get the popularity to be able to sustain 70 heat easily, then you can drop that. It's up to you how you want to do it. Um, but at the start, I always have... Um, Atom Smasher... Um, Yes. So you get the picture anyway. So then you work down and you put um, who else is going to be feuding um, for your North American. Um, who else? Who's going to be the contenders? Uh, I can take um, so Dulce out there. So in here, I'd want to add my next big tag teams. So uh, Huey Cannonball. And Jefferson Stardust are probably the best tag team you've got, stats wise and uh, experience wise. So, like me personally, I always build the, the championships around them. Uh, we need another first team. So, the next best uh, popularity one are Ranger and Marshall Dillon. So, add them in there. So, they can have. An on and off feud with the awesomeness, um, while the um, fame and money um, team with a uh, team up against uh, a wine crush. Make sure that you've got with your tag ones. Make sure you've got them uh, set to who they team with. So Paul Huntington is with Monty on there. Ranger should be with Marshall Dillon. And Jefferson Stardust and Huey Cannonball. There we go. So we've got our tag team set up. Uh, who else have we got? Uh, you could put Stephen Parker and Hernandez in there, but I, I don't think their popularity is at that level. Um, James Prudence. He could go in there. He's got 61 popularity. That seems like the the lower end for the, the North American championship. Um, but I usually team him with... Because uh, he's, he's like 40-year-old, so he's getting towards the end of his career. You could either bring in um, his former tag team partner, Frederick, and they could uh, be a sort of gatekeeper, mid-card tag team. Um, or you could put him with an up and comer, like somebody who's got a similar gimmick, um, like what's he called, D'Souza. Why is he not appearing? There he is, Dominic D'Souza. Yeah, they're right next to each other as well. They've got suave gimmicks. They 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 could be a good tag team. He could uh, he needs uh, to build his experience, his psychology, so he'll be learning from prudence. You can always run a house show. 
And another good tip, go on the house show circuit, have them team up, see if there's any chemistry there. Get yourself a B show and, and test these things out. Um, so Primus Allen, he could be in there. He's got uh, 64 popularity. Um, John Greig could go in there. He's got 60 popularity. I always have him uh, form a, a stable with uh, Bear Bukowski and Avalanche, kind of like a dark brooding stable. And in the past, they've joined Scythe. You can see my uh, SWF save, um, which is on my channel, in my playlists, if they're in the SWF playlist. Um, I've gone six months into that, which is pretty much what I'm telling you now was what I've planned in the past. So you can go and check out that video there. Um, but yeah, yeah, usually I normally have eight in this one, eight in this one, uh, and then I have two lots of tag team um, storylines going on. And the, the, the whole point is there's going to be winners and losers um, in these sections, and then you just chop and change. So the winners of your number one contenders uh, in, in in this section will move up to feud with your champions, um, and, and vice versa. It could be over six months. It could be over three months. Uh, you can just chop and change due to injuries and whatnot. Um, and as long as you, you can keep the, the storyline heat there, um then you're laughing um uh, I've, I've just started um let me jump to my wwe save so it's in 2013 yeah i need to update that um here we go so this is how I've got it set up uh, with this save. So I've got my WWE Championship ones. These are my top guys. I've got a few part-timers in here, so Undertaker and Triple H are clusters. Um, not part-time, occasional wrestlers. So they won't be uh, seen much. My um, starting character is Triple H. Um, for this sort of... I'm, I'm going to do like a diary of it. Um, so... That'll, that'll be interesting to see. Um, you'll be able to see how I use this storyline function over a longer period. So I am working on that now. Uh, there's your World Heavyweight Championship scene. Um, the plan is to unify those. It was, um, I think they did it at TLC, so December pay-per-view. Uh, but I'm hoping to do it for SummerSlam. Because um, there's no brand split. So having the... The two championships seems a bit silly to me. So that would become my next contendership level. And then when people have um, grown from the intercontinental level, they'll move into my number one contenders uh, for the WWE championship. Um, not number one contenders as in their next in line, but the next group down, if you know what I mean. And then once they um, do well in this section, they'll move up and the ones who have either lost popularity or have just worked with everyone in this. You just move people up and down all the time to keep things fresh rather than have the same stagnant um, feuds because it's boring for you and it's boring for, obviously, wrestling fans. You all know. You, you're all wrestling fans. Otherwise, why are you here? <laughs> right then. So uh, hopefully that helps. Um, like I say, within the notes, like... So say I'm going to feud um, uh, Cena versus Punk because Punk's just lost to Taker at WrestleMania. Cena beat The Rock in the second bout. Punk feels that he should have been the main event. Uh, if he hadn't lost to Cena or if he hadn't lost to Rock um, prior to, then he would be in that main event. Um. And prior to that, Punk had beat Senior a number of times. Um, so he feels like he should be next in line. So I'm going to run that. Um, I'm trying to keep Punk away from Ryback. <laughs> we don't want that uh, situation. Although it might work differently in this um, sort of timeline. Um, who else was in there? Uh, you can have... Um, 
Lesnar's part time, Undertaker's part time, Triple H is part time. So we could run Orton versus Jericho. Jericho's a face. Uh, I think he's a. I don't think he's he's on the next pay per view. Extreme Rules. He came back because they rushed Punk back from injury, I believe, and he faced Jericho when he come back. Um, back when this is from his podcast that he did with Colt Cabana. So that I'm just trying to remember the, the the kind of era of this time. And then we've got Mysterio in there, but everyone else is part time. Um, I think Lesnar versus Triple H continued. Obviously, Triple H won at Mania, which I didn't agree with, but I can't go back and change that. Um, so Lesnar did win at Extreme Rules, but nobody remembers. Well, not many people remember that because the WrestleMania, they're, they're just so annoyed that he lost to WrestleMania. So I would have him squash Triple H, like absolutely, like he did Cena, just totally destroy him um, and then disappear until SummerSlam and then he can feud with Punk. Um, so we've got Mysterio in there. So you could have Mysterio in here. And we could run with those as our top three for the first few months. Uh, World Heavyweight. Obviously, the ins and outs of how things work. It's up to you whether you want to, how you want to run it. People sometimes like to do diaries, so they'll have context of, I am. Um, this is why these two are feuding and, and whatnot. But it's it's your game. If you just want to run it as like a foot, like if you play football manager, like you just like I want to book these two guys to see how well they do, who gets over um, in this world. Uh, you can just like give them bullet points. Like you can imagine, like you're an old school booker. Go out there, sell me some tickets. Talk about you want to be WWE champion. Um, insult him a little bit. Uh, you go out, go back and forth with him. Like it doesn't. You don't have to lay everything out in your head, um, unless you are doing it for a diary. If you just want to have fun, just just play how you want to play. Um, and this one, again, this will be the last one I do. Um, I do say M a lot. I, I apologize. I'm trying to get better at public speaking. So we've got. Del Rio versus Ziggler. For some reason, I'm sure Ziggler was a heel, but he's a face on this one. I know he turned in the match with Del Rio when he cashed in, but he hasn't done that yet, so that might just be a um, something I can go and edit in the editor. Uh, but we'll just run with it now, because I'm sure it was on the first Raw after Mania. So the first Raw you would do is when Ziggler cashed in. Um... And that is that already happened because we're ex we're building up to extreme reels. I'll have to go back and check that. Um, so Big Show, Christian, Mark Henry, Kane are all sort of coming to the end of their careers. So I'd I'd want let's put Sheamus over. Screw it, we're doing Henry and Big Show. Um, those three are going to have like a colossal feud, uh, and Sheamus is going to come out looking strong um, and then that leaves Christian and Kane I'm sure Kane and Daniel Bryan um, are team hell no aren't they at the minute and they've got the titles but they're going to lose them to the shield um, and I'm going to have Kane turn and Daniel and Daniel Bryan I don't know why I've called him. I nearly put Danielson, but that's uh, a bit early for that. Uh, yeah, Brian versus Kane. Um, and then who else have we got in there? Christian. Yeah, Christian It can just be sort of a floater in this group. He's not... Um, he's not technically... He's in the contendership, obviously, so he'll be in multi-man matches. And he'll be appearing matches on Raw and SmackDown with these guys. But technically, he's not going to be getting many wins because he's not featured in a storyline just yet. When these have played out, he'll swap in for somebody else. 
you could do Christian and I think he's a heel though. And big. You could do Christian and Big Show, and, and it's it's up to you. I just feel like I want to get Sheamus. I have a go at getting Sheamus over, um, and then yeah, Del Rio and Ziggler will feud. Um, but Ziggler is going to retain. I'll win it depending on. Who. Let me just double check. Is he is he already got the title in this, or has he already lost it? World heavyweight. No, he hasn't won it yet. Oh yeah, he has. There we go. And then at Extreme Rules didn't did Del Rio win it back because the Ziggler's concussion. I'm sure he did. Anyway, they're gonna continue their feud. Um, they've already done the double turn. It would seem so. We'll run from there. So. Right, I hope that was helpful anyway, guys. Sorry, I went off on a bit of a, a tangent there. But the main thing is um, if, if the default way isn't working for you, if, you, if you're getting penalised quite a lot, I know early game it is quite difficult, especially if you haven't got the storylines with that kind of heat. But like I say, you've got to do two segments in the first show over 70 to make those storylines get that heat. One segment isn't good enough. So make sure you've got those guys in there. Um, Whereas this way, you've got more options for people. So you could have, like, you could have a, a two singles matches or a singles and a tag from this one, a singles and a tag from this one, or you could just have guys having angles backstage because um, you've got plenty of options. Um, same with your United States uh, Championship. Um, Maybe not so much because they're not quite popular. So you could the unified tag team titles, the Shield are getting quite popular. Um, the New Age Outlaws are, are quite popular in it. Uh, you're into continental feuds as well, but definitely more more interactions from these two divisions because they are already like sixty five popularity or over. So they're going to guarantee you to get um, those those ratings that you need. And then you can use the them to team up with the uh, intercontinental guys um, in tag matches. That'll help elevate these guys with uh, viewership and popularity growth and whatnot. So there we go. I hope that was helpful. Um, again, thank you for um, the, the the views and uh, the likes and whatnot that I've been getting recently. Uh, like I said, I'm trying to get more and more content out. So. Stick with me, um, and if you're new, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate everything. So uh, thank you very much, guys. I'll catch you later.